some random place and then uh, okay then my wife my internet didn't work so uh, I and nobody knows what is the mathematics department <laughs> uh, okay so um, I have an hour and a half, right? No, an hour. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so G will be a semi simple league group, a uh, simple league group. Uh, all the time, all, all the time, single, semi simple, but uh, sometimes when the statement is not correct, then simple. And uh, K, a maximal uh, compact subgroup, so there is unique. Uh, so this is non compact, simply group uh, connected. Uh, the example to have in mind, I always like to think uh, about. Uh, uh, for example, uh, one is SLN R, and the other is SON1. So uh, here the okay. So there are many more examples. Uh, sometimes uh, you want a specific uh, leg group, but uh, this two represents uh, say high rank. The rank uh, of this one is n minus one, and the rank of this one is uh, is one. So that's the rank. Uh, so then there is some dichotomy between high rank and rank one. Uh, this is something we think of it as hyperbolic and this uh, as uh, <coughs> more rigid. Uh, K is a uh, compact, uh, uh, and then X will be G mod K is the symmetric space. So the symmetric space of this one is uh, the hyperbolic space of dimension n, uh, and uh, so this is a nice, very nice, uh, simply connected, uh, contractible Riemannian manifold of uh, non-positive curvature. In this case, even negative curvature, and, and in that case, uh, non-positive sectional curvature. Uh, and now. Uh, G acts on this space by isometries. Um, so, um, and actually G is almost the, the, the isometry group of that space. Uh, so to, in a sense, to, to investigate uh, this creature is the same as investigating uh, this creature, symmetric, Riemannian symmetric space uh, <clears throat> of non-compact type. And uh, if gamma in G uh, is discrete subgroup, then gamma correspond to a manifold or more generally an orbifold, which is the quotient uh, G mod K mod gamma. And uh, so this is the orbifold associated to gamma. It's a manifold if gamma is torsion free. If there are no element of finite order, then it's a manifold. And if in general, uh, there are some ramified points, uh, Almost everywhere it looks like a manifold, but there, there could be some. Uh, and then uh, there is a, a how measure on G corresponding to a Riemannian uh, uh, how measure on G uh, corresponds to the Riemannian measure on X. And uh, this uh, gives you. So there is a volume form, and, and you know the manifold of uh, of uh, the x mod gamma, and uh, <laughs> and the volume uh, of m, which is also if you normalize properly, it's also the core volume uh, uh, of gamma inside G, uh, and uh, if this volume is finite. Then uh, uh, gamma is called a lattice. So G mod gamma is a, a manifold, of, is, is a, a space of finite uh, measure. Sometimes we normalize it to be one. And uh, okay, and then there is a, the theory of lattices is a, 
maybe one of the most uh, beautiful theories in mathematics. It's very uh, thoroughly uh, investigated uh, uh, in the last 60 years. Uh, there was a wonderful uh, aspect of this theory uh, from geometric group theory, dynamical uh, number theory, uh, um, and etc. And uh, <clears throat> okay, much less is known about uh, discrete subgroup which are not lattices. Uh, so, for instance, subgroup of infinite index inside lattices. So uh, while we we understand very very well uh, in also there are also many open questions, but uh, we we know a lot about lattices. We know today almost nothing about uh, uh, about uh, what we call thin groups, like the discrete subgroup uh, of infinite covolume. Uh, okay, so. Uh, what I will discuss in this uh, two lectures is uh, um, a probabilistic method, a, a random approach to, to, to say things about lattices, and uh, also uh, uh, in the last lecture about uh, non lattices, but discrete subgroup uh, in general. Um, so uh, we denote by sub G. Uh, the space of the uh, closed subgroup. Of G and there is a natural topology uh, which makes it a compact uh, metric space. It's called Chabuti topology. Uh, <coughs> so there is a topo uh, topology. Uh, maybe the fastest way uh, to define it is to say that the distance between uh, two group uh, is the integral um, of uh, the house of distance between uh, the intersection of H1 with the ball of radius R around the identity in G um, and the intersection of H2 with the same ball. And then you, you you need to multiply by some function that decay fast enough so that this will uh, this integral will converge and this tells you the distance between two groups. So basically, two groups are close to each other. If when you look uh, on a large ball in G, uh, they're very close uh, as sets in in the house of distance. Um, so that's a metric, uh, and then this will this uh, this space. Sub G is uh, compact. So this is uh, quite general. Whenever G is a locally compact group, you can define this space. Uh, <coughs> um, and this will be a compact uh, metrizable space. Uh, <coughs> and uh, one thing to say about this space, uh, which uh, one thing we want to observe uh, is that uh, G is an isolated point. So basically it's, it's a complicated space. So it's always compact, but it's a huge space. So uh, it's very hard to say things about it. And uh, you can, you, you can uh, use it uh, for many things. For instance, if you, if you look at the group gamma, uh, take gamma to be SL3Z and consider the conjugacy class of SL3Z. Uh, you get some subset here, and you, then you take the closure. Then you get a compactification of of uh, of the of uh, of this space of uh, of G mod gamma. Uh, in that case, it will be the Borel cell compactification. In general, it's a it's a very uh, very complicated compact space which carries a lot of information. Uh, and since it uh, uh, since it is uh, it carries so much information, it's um, it's hard to use it directly. So instead, what we do, we consider uh, measures on this space. So I'll do it in a moment. But first, uh, let's see one result uh, that is useful. Proposition: uh, G is isolated. Is an isolated point. 
you cannot approximate the group G itself by uh, by proper subgroups. Proper closure. So this is not true for any local. For instance, if you consider R, the group R, uh, you can approximate it by uh, cyclic copies of Z with uh, like, uh, so every proper closed subgroup of R is either trivial or, or discrete uh, cyclic. And, and if you take it with a uh, period alpha when alpha is very small, you get a, you can approximate R by by uh, by by discrete subgroups. Um, in a sense, the, okay, if for R, this space sub G is, is simple. It's actually an interval, a closed interval. So there's no isolated point. But in general, it's a complicated space. Uh, and if G is, uh, uh, suppose, if G is a compact, simple group, uh, then uh, you know, for instance, uh, there is a theorem of Jordan that tell you that finite subgroups are basically uh, virtually like the abelian, almost abelian in, in a uniform way. So the, in a sense, so if there is non-abelian, uh, in our case, it's not compact also. You cannot approximate it by proper subgroups. Um, and uh, basically, this is true more generally uh, whenever G uh, has no abelianization, uh, so, sorry, the, yeah, whenever the, so this is, for Lie group, this is if and only if the commutator is dense in G. Uh, it's also true for a non archimedean Lie group like SLM QP. Uh, so maybe I'll leave it for the exercise uh, sessions uh, to discuss it, but it, it's a good remark to know it that you cannot, and this was known since the 50s, uh, so this is known long ago, uh, it's a, but it's it's a good remark because then we can just remove this point, uh, ignore it because we uh, and uh, and and it's good that we will not get there if we take some process on on sub G. You, you want to analyze the limit, so so at least this point we can avoid. Uh, we'll come back to that. Anyhow, so uh, can I hide this? A moment, uh, and uh, so suppose yeah. suppose the uh, okay. So what is a random subgroup? So definition uh, by random subgroup. Uh, uh, is uh, a probability measure. On subject, um, so we are any probability measure on sub G is a random subgroup. Uh, <clears throat> let's also say inside sub G you have a, a, a subset. Uh, this is the discrete subgroup. Of G. And uh, so this here is uh, another exercise for you. Uh, this subset uh, is open. So it's a nice subset inside G. Uh, this is basically equivalent to, to the fact that G is a Lie group. You know, this uh, Hilbert fifth problem that uh, to say that uh, a locally compact group is a Lie group. It's uh, if and only if it doesn't have a small, no small subgroup. There is an open subset, open neighborhood of identity that contains no non-trivial subgroup. What does this Lie group mean? Like real Lie group or like? Yeah, really group. So, so uh, yeah, this is this is a equivalent. Yeah, for SLM QP, it's not true. Uh, the discrete subgroup it's not open anymore. You can approximate the trivial group. So this is this statement. I think it's equivalent to to the fact that G is a Lie group. Sorry, all the subgroups are themselves discrete. They're not this sitting discreetly in the Chabot. Okay. Yeah. Inside the Chabot topology, 
the space the set of discrete subgroup is an open set uh uh yeah yeah so this is because g is illegal it's not true for general uh this this part is true also for for, for piadic uh, non archimedia or positive characteristic Lie groups but here it's for a really group uh and uh, and then uh so so by a, a discrete random star group uh a discrete random subgroup and most of the time uh, this is what uh, we care about uh, is a measure of mu is uh, such mu which uh, which will support is this op okay the support is closed but you want mu uh, of uh, the the probability one you get a discrete group so that's a that's a discrete random subgroup okay so now G acts on sub G by conjugation. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then a uh, uh, probability measure which is uh, invariant under this action uh, is what we call an IRS. An IRS invariant random subgroup uh, is a G invariant probability measure on sub G. So basically, and uh, <coughs> So in, in, in IRS became uh, quite popular in the last uh, uh, 12, 13 years. So, so, so many people uh, uh, got interested in, in studying invariant random subgroups. Uh, surprisingly, there are a lot of uh, application. We will see some. Um, and, uh, and basically uh, in the first, uh to talk so today and and tomorrow i will concentrate on irs irs's uh but for me only in the setup of uh, simple e group semi simple e group because this is what i mostly care of uh so uh and in the last talk we'll discuss non-invariant random subgroups which is a a notion that was less investigated uh, it's much more general. So in a sense, so it is a bit surprising that IRS uh, became so uh, successful because uh, uh, in the in the context of uh, of uh, of groups, uh, same simple groups, uh, these are not available group. If you restrict yourself to to only to invariant measures on this compact that then you lose a lot of information. non middle group is a very few such uh, action. Uh, I mean, much less than general action. But still, it's a quite good, uh, we will see that uh, it's a, it's quite good uh, notion. Uh, and uh, so if you want, let's observe that IRS uh, G, the space of all IRS, probability measure on sub G, we can write it in the form which are invariant under the G action by conjugation. And this is a compact space. Is a compact space uh, with respect to the weak star topology. There's always, uh, uh, when we consider measures on a, on a measures on house of compact space, uh, we take them with the weak star topologies. A sequence of measures, converge to a limit or a, net of measure of virtual limit if uh, the integral of uh, every continuous function uh, contain converge to a limit um, so that's a so so basic example so first example we have in mind uh, is a is a normal subgroup 
So that's for general, uh, for general local copper group, normal subgroups corresponds to Dirac measure. So a measure that's supported one point on one group and it's invariant on the conjugation must be a, a normal subgroup. And uh, the second basic example is, do you see when I write here or not? It's not hiding. So the second is lattices. So let me extend, explain. Uh, so if gamma is a lattice, then G mod gamma is finite volume, which we can normalize uh, to be one. You can still consider the probability measure. So, um, yeah, so, so suppose that gamma inside G is a lattice, so that's a, my short notation for saying that the gamma is a lattice in G, then uh, uh, let uh, uh, mu be the probability measure uh, on G mod gamma, so by how theorem or by the extension of how theorem, there is a unique uh, uh, probability measure of G mod gamma, we call it mu. And now consider the map, uh, there is a map from G mod gamma to sub G, uh, sending a coset uh, to uh, the conjugate G gamma G inverse. Uh, and if you put the push forward uh, of mu, of mu under that map uh, gives an IRS, uh, an IRS which we called, we denote by mu gamma. So mu gamma is the same as mu of delta, if delta is the conjugate of gamma. So it's, it's actually an IRS that corresponds to the conjugacy class of gamma. And it supports is the closure, clo the closure of the conjugacy class of gamma. So you see every lattice correspond to, uh, every lattice correspond to, to uh, an, uh, an IRS. So uh, once, so we see an IRS is a generalization both of normal subgroup and of lattices. So, so it's only say that it's something interesting because any theorem that you, you prove for IRSs, it will apply to normal subgroup and to lattices. And uh, once you, you see that it's generalized lattices, then one thing to, to say is, uh, okay, uh, uh, now we have a lot of things to do. We have a lot of theorems about lattice sets. Let's try to generalize them to IRSs. So, and, and people do that. And, and, and it's good because then we understand IRS better. But uh, another direction is to say, okay, it's a generalization of lattices. Let's uh, see if we can say new thing about this creature and, and deduce new results about lattices. And that also works, so surprisingly. So uh, we will see some examples. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, indeed there are much, uh, there are a lot more IRSs than lattices, but, but uh, <coughs> uh, maybe before uh, discussing that, uh, let me give one, uh, one, another way to think about uh, uh, this, uh, uh, random conjugate of the lattice. So, 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 so here is something you can do with, with uh, this observation. Uh, so consider, uh, and say, a uh, hyperbolic surface, a closed hyperbolic surface, a uh, something with picture like that. And uh, so it has a hyperbolic metric. 
And then uh, uh, if you pick, picking a random uh, point and, uh, or if you want a random uh, point and a frame, so in that, if it's two, since it's two dimension, so we, we pick a, a, a random point and, and a unit vector. Uh, once you do that, it gives, you can embed the, fund, it gives you a, a, a way to, to embed a fundamental group, the surface group, uh, inside, uh, inside the uh, uh, SL2R, which is the a group of isopisal to r which is the group of isometries of the universal cover so any so any choice any any uh any choice of a point and a and a frame a point and a of a unit tangent band a unit tangent vector gives you some conjugate of the fundamental group inside the inside sl2 r and if you take a probability measure here it gives you a probability measure on all the conjugate so it actually gives you an IRS. So in a sense, the, uh, the Riemannian metric, the hyperbolic metric, will correspond to an IRS. And any compact hyperbolic surface correspond to an IRS in uh, SL2R. Or PSL2R, doesn't matter. And uh, now we know that there are many, many uh, different uh, 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 there is like uh, six G minus six dimension. There, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, of Riemannian structure. Each of them give me an IRS. Now we go back here and remind ourselves that the space of all IRS is a compact space. So we can take a compactification of all this creature, and this gives us a compactification of the. Um, Teichmiller space or the, the model like space. So, so, so by looking at IRS, we get some uh, some new compactification of uh, and and uh, okay. This this was uh, investigated by Yannick Krivka. He, he analyzed this uh, compactification. It's uh, very close to the well known the Lin Manfred compactification. This is just a remark. Uh, let me say another. Classical. Uh, uh, so, so what I'll do in the remaining time today, uh, I will demonstrate uh, why I want to demonstrate why looking at IRS uh, gives uh, new things about this uh, about lattices. Uh, so. Um, um, yeah, so let's start by by uh, by extending uh, well-known results about uh, lattices to IRSs. So one of the uh, classical theorems about uh, about lattices is the Borel density theorem. So when we think about lattices, uh, the philosophy that I like to 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 think is that lattices are discrete approximation of G. So, uh, so in a sense, if gamma is the lattice in G, then they resemble each other. So, for instance, in general, if, if G is a G is a minimal, if not if gamma is a minimal, G has property T, if not if gamma is property T, and so on. Uh, but uh, more general, there are, there are a lot of uh, uh, results of of this uh, uh, direction. Uh, one of them, the algebraic, is the Borel density theorem. So, if you have a, a simple Lie group and gamma is a lattice in in G, uh, then gamma is a risky dense. Any po any poly poly polynomial equation that is satisfied on gamma must be satisfied on G. So, in some sense, uh, the sim similar in algebraic uh, sense. Uh, so this also goes uh, to IRSs, uh, the, the same result, and. Um, uh, and one of the consequences of Borel density, uh, one of the first consequences, if you read a basic, a basic book about lattices, like Agunathan's book, one of the basic uh, consequences is that uh, if you have a, a subgroup of finite covolume, it must be discrete. So in G, if you have, let's say, SLNR, and you consider a subgroup of finite covolume, H, is a subgroup such as G mod H has finite 
volume, this finite uh, uh, probability measure, which is gene variant, and H must be discrete, must be a lattice. So this is one of the consequences of Borel density. And this result applies also to IRSs. So here is a theorem. Let me call it Borel density theorem uh, for IRSs. Uh, so let's uh, let, uh, let G be a simple group. And anything can be generated to semi-simple, but uh, then you need to be a bit more careful. A simple uh, Lie group, non-compact, simple, non-compact, Lie group, uh, and mu, and IRS. Uh, okay. So, so two things. So first, uh, mu is uh, with probability one. Uh, so if a mu of the trivial group is zero, so it, there is no atom in the trivial group, then uh, uh, almost surely uh, mu almost surely uh, you are, uh, we have the Zariski density. How, do, how should I write it? Uh, uh, then, um, okay, let's then mu is supported on the Ritsky dense subgroups. <laughs> so, if, if, uh, so of course, one could one is a normal subgroup, you can have. The trivial IRS, but otherwise any any thing in the support is uh, is risky dense. And two, if uh, uh, mu of the group G itself is zero, then uh, almost surely uh, you are discrete. Then mu uh, of sub discrete G is one, i.e. almost surely, uh, uh, almost surely discreteness. <clears throat> so this is the, the Borel density theorem. Uh, it's a theorem about lattices that uh, generalized automatically, almost automatically to, to uh, to IRS. So I say almost automatically because so the, the, the first proof of Borel density theorem, the proof by Borel, which is also it's a beautiful proof. Uh, uh, it's written nicely in Ragunathan's book. Uh, but a year after uh, Borel gave this proof, Pilsenberg uh, gave a, a I would say a much better proof. I mean, it's it's not true that it, it doesn't recover the full generality of Borel density, but it recovers with its lattices, and it's it's really uh, much easier to understand and to generalize. So, uh, so uh, Furstenberg, uh, uh, what is what is Furstenberg proof or Furstenberg lemma? Let me. Let me recall that, uh, let's say, uh, uh, again, G is a simple, uh, I, will, I don't need to write it any uh, all the time, G is a simple, connected, non-compact Lie group, um, and um, let's say that uh, 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 if uh, Rho uh, is an irreducible Uh, or is it uh, from G? Uh, is it is a representation of G uh, in in GLN uh, GLN? Let's say R. Uh, if Rho is an irreducible representation, 
so in particular, the image of G is non-compact uh, because uh, yeah, G is a simple group. We saw. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, then uh, there is no uh, uh, G invariant measure. on uh, the projective space, P and minus one R. You cannot have G invariant measure, uh, probability measure. There's no uh, G invariant probability measure on the projective space. So, so uh, uh, of course, uh, there's a, the Fusenberg lemma is more general, but the, the idea, uh, that I'll tell you is the same, and the, the idea is, uh, uh, yeah, we don't need G to be simple group. Any irreducible non-compact subgroup of G, L, and R does not admit uh, invariant probability measure on the projective space. And the idea is to look at the K, K decomposition <laughs> of, uh, of, uh, of G, L, and R, uh, the Cartan uh, uh, K K decomposition, uh, where K is just S O N R, the maximal compact, and, and A is the diagonal. A A plus is uh, uh, A one, A N is the, this group that A I is at least A I plus one, uh, and uh, uh, so that's a semi group, and uh, there is a, you can write G as K A plus K, right? You're familiar, so, so there's in the theory of Lee group, there's, there's like a list of uh, uh, five or six uh, standard decomposition. Uh, one of them is the KK decomposition, which we should always have in mind. So every matrix you can write as uh, 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 orthogonal matrix, time diagonal matrix, time orthogonal matrix, um, and this diagonal matrix is unique. The, the, this, this composition is not, it's almost unique, but not unique, but non-uniqueness is in the compact, uh, uh, not in the middle, not in, and, but it doesn't matter. So now uh, from the KK decomposition, uh, you can deduce that because uh, uh, if GN uh, our element in GLN R that goes to infinity, Basically, the, the norms, the norm, the matrix norm go to infinity. Uh, it means the only way to go to infinity is in the A part, because K is compact. Uh, then, uh, up to uh, uh, taking subsequence, uh, we have that. Uh, there is I between uh, N minus one and one such that AI of GN divided by AI plus one of GN goes to infinity. There must be a jump somewhere here in the middle. AI, AI plus one, the, the, the ratio between them because the product of the AI is one. So we are not in GLN, we are in SN. So, yeah. So the product is one, and, uh, and therefore, uh, and therefore uh, the, there must be a jump. If you go to infinity, then A1 go to infinity. By the way, A1 is the norm of G. So A1 go to infinity, but the product is one, there must be a jump somewhere that goes to infinity. But what does it mean, this jump? It means that, if you look at this, uh, how G acts on the projective space, it takes almost all the, like there is, there is a N minus I dimensional subspace that if you are not very close to it, it this element G takes you to this I dimensional subspace. Okay, the, this K and K what may rotate them, but you don't care where they are. So there is, so you see that the measure must be, must be since, the, since this element uh, preserves the measure, 
the measure must be uh, must be inside some proper subspace, the proton in the proper subspace. Now, since the action is irreducible, that cannot happen. So this is a, a hand wave because if I, I would write a formal proof, it will take half an hour and, and I only have an hour and a half. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. so I hand wave, but you can look, look it up. It's written in many places. Basically, the KK decomposition tells us that uh, this uh, observation of Pilsenberg, that there is no invariant probability measure on the on projective space under non-compact irreducible subgroups. And, and from this, we deduce the following. So, so uh, we deduce that because uh, uh, this implies the Borel density theorem because, uh, so this will be uh, part A and this will be part B. Uh, <clears throat> So now we can deduce A and B by considering uh, uh, for part A, uh, considering, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, for A, the connected component of the Zelitsky closure of gamma. If you take it, you, you, and for part B, let me just write it and then explain what, uh, uh, the connected component of gamma. Yeah, I, I think a random subgroup. I don't know that it's discrete and I don't know that it's a risky dense. But uh, to prove that it's risky dense, I look at its uh, the risky closure and take connected component, and then you see you get you get uh, oh if you want uh, not that but the Lie algebra oh the Lie algebra of I I, I have I have a random subgroup I take its the risky closure take its Lie algebra. I got I get probability measure on Lie algebras, which is invariant under G. Pilsenberg lemma tells us that's not possible. Okay, I, there is some uh, there is a short way from Pilsenberg to that. You need to uh, Pilsenberg. I told you for uh, projective space. Now it's not projective space. It's a uh, Lie algebra, but then you can take the a uh, wedge product uh, representation to, to external power representation with the right dimension so that this Lie, this Lie algebra become one dimensional. I mean, from if you, if the Lie algebra is k-dimensional, you take the the k external power, you get another representation, and you they, then you get uh, uh, you get a measure on the pro, on, on a projective space. Uh, and uh, and and may, you should recall that every Every it's a semi-simple Lie group. It's a completely reducible. Every 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 representation is a direct sum of irreducible one. And once you you remember this fact, then from Filsenberg lemma, you you deduce that there is no measure on the set of Lie algebra or Lie sub algebras, uh, which is a uh, maybe maybe I just write it as a lemma. There is no uh, probability measure uh, on a Lie sub algebra or algebras sub algebras of uh, G which is G invariant, except beside uh, the Dirac measure on the trivially algebra, the zero, and the Dirac measure on the fully algebra. Okay. 
uh, besides a uh, direct measure on uh, the zero Lie algebra or the fully algebra. If you have a simple, uh, if you have, there, there is no, uh, which is G invariant, but you replace, you can replace G by, by any, uh, yeah, you can replace G by GLN and, and the invariants you just need under a non-compact uh, irreducible subgroup. And uh, and from that, since there are no measure, you cannot choose uh, randomly algebra. Uh, you cannot choose invariantly randomly algebra, except if you choose the trivial or the fully algebra. So this follows from the first one lemma. That's the consequence of the first one lemma. So the first one was not only two for simple but two for any right? And now we need simple. So I use G both for GLN and for for the subgroup. So so that, that's so so formally, if you want, uh, if you want to say precisely, uh, uh, more generally or more generally, take take if you want G in the, the, the statement. There is no if you look at all the uh, uh, algebras of GLN. There is no probability measure on on this on this. State of Lie algebra, the space of Lie algebra, um, uh, which is invariant under H when, whenever H is an irreducible non compact subgroup. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, probably GLN is also. Uh, yeah, in GLN you have the center. Yeah. It, yes. So, so, but it, yeah, you can replace. The big group by any simple Lie group and the small group by any non compact uh, irreducible subgroup. Anyhow, once you apply it to the Zorichki closure, you, you get Zorichki density. And once you apply it to the standard closure, since gamma is closed, it's a invariant, then, uh, then, uh, then you get discreteness. Okay. <clears throat> Let me just tell you now one nice consequence about for lattices from this. So the first corollary that we see, so since G is an isolated point, we see that now that any invariant random subgroup is supported on discrete subgroups. Any invariant random subgroup uh, without atom at, uh, the, at the full group must be supported on discrete subgroups. So that's a nice corollary. The set of a discrete IRS is compact. If you use a simple Lie group, the, the set of discrete IRS, which I, I denote by IRS, the G is compact. And why? Because, yeah, if you want any IRS, any IRS by the Borel density uh, is of the form mu equals uh, some alpha times Dirac at G plus one minus alpha times mu uh, D, where this is discrete. Any IRS of this form is of this form. So if you consider only such, only so the space of all mu such that alpha is zero, so all the support is of discrete, uh, is still is still compact. The limit of such must be also like that because G is an isolated point. G is an isolated point, and if any point in the support, if it's not G, it must be discrete. It means that the set of all discrete IRS is uh, is compact. Now this observation, uh, right? You so it's not so deep, but it already gives uh, something wonderful, which is the kashdan margulis theorem. So, uh, what is kashdan margulis theorem? And this will be a, a, a 
I think a nice way to 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 finish the the first lecture with some application. So Kashdan and Margulis proved that uh, suppose if you consider if you care only about three-dimensional hyperbolic manifolds, there is a lower bound for the volume. The volume cannot be arbitrarily small. Similarly for surfaces, hyperbolic surfaces that was known before by uh, Gauss Bonnet theorem, but uh, but if you take any symmetric space and consider only manifolds which are locally isometric to that, uh, there is a lower bound on the volume. So what is the kashtan margulis theorem? <coughs> um, there is a lower bound, so there is given G, there is, um, let's say, uh, some delta bigger than zero, such that the core volume uh, of gamma is bigger than delta for any lattice, uh, for any lattice in G. There is a lower bound on the core volume of gamma, of lattices, so a lower bound on the volume of, of uh, many products of from G and K with gamma. So that's a, a, a beautiful theorem. It's a starting point of uh, many other things, like then, uh, yeah. But uh, but uh, for instance, in dimension three, there is uh, there is a, a lot of investigation of finding the the lattice of smallest covolume and etc. Uh, also for for other groups, but um, and anyhow, why this follow from what we just said? So I claim that uh, this is this is a, so here is the proof. Is this always achieved? Like this means sorry. Is this always yeah, this infinitum always, yeah. always achieved. Yeah, this means, but it, it's it, that's not a, yeah that's separate. It's always achieved, but uh, and sometimes in co-compact lattices, sometimes in not co-compact. So it's uh, and in many cases it's not known what is the minimum, but it's always achieved. Uh, and and here is the proof using RLSs. Uh, I I actually I, I actually uh, write a more general claim. Sometimes when we can write a more general claim, it becomes easier, right? So so uh, so uh, <clears throat> so here is here is a, a more general claim a proposition or theorem. There is an identity neighborhood. U of G, yeah. So it's it is sub subset of U, uh, such that uh, for any discrete IRS mu, the probability that a random subgroup intersect U non-trivially is a uh, uh, smaller than half uh, is yes it's smaller than half so with probability at least half every so there is some fixed for fix u independently of mu it's good for all, all mu such that for some fixed identity neighborhood such that for every irs the probability that i intersect this irs uh, that they, they intersect you non trivially cannot be uh, bigger than half. And what is the proof? So, uh, so I have only two, so I'll, 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 I'll write the proof uh, in two lines, and maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll say a bit more about the proof. But, but basically, I, I think this two, these two lines can convince you. Uh, so, Suppose the contrary. Suppose the contrary, then uh, let uh, UN be ascending uh, uh, neighborhoods uh, converging. 
through the identity. So, so we look inside G uh, and we, we look at smaller and smaller neighborhoods such that the, the intersection is just the identity. Descending. 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 Descending neighborhoods uh, uh, converging to the identity. So U1, U2, U3, and so on. They're, suppose they're relatively compact and, and converge to the identity. Uh, assuming the contrary, uh, uh, let mu n be such that, so B and IRS, such that uh, mu n of this with u n is at least half. So it's it's counter. This is the counter example to the to the statement that we want to prove with respect to u n. That's mu n. By compactness, mu n, if you want, k sub subgroup converge to mu, a discrete IRS, some discrete IRS. Now mu has this property with every open subgroup. Uh, this implies that mu, mu is not discrete. So this, this contradict compactness uh, by contrast to compactness. Sure. You see, mu is not discrete. It cannot be supported on discrete subgroup because it intersects every non-trivial uh, subset of every non-trivial, okay. End of time, but uh, uh, you can ask about this or, or, or tomorrow I can give more details about that. This is a detailed proof, right? Sorry? I mean, what, what details are missing? Uh, maybe you yeah, can it's, it's, not be yeah, the, uh, no, I should explain why a limit, why it is not discrete. You can say, okay, 